In this video, we're going to derive the relationship between the currents in the primary and the secondary. To do this, in the, of course, we're talking about an ideal transformer. To do this, we're going to short the terminals of the secondary so that there will be no voltage across to the secondary. And given that, then, the two terms here, you'll have the self-induced voltage drop due to I2, and you'll also have the mutually induced voltage due to I1 in the second coil. So, um, taking into account the dot convention, the current I1 is flowing into the dotted terminal, so we will have a plus to minus reference on the voltage that's induced by I1, and that's going to equal J omega M times I1. Now, we do a KVL around here, and we get, first of all, going in the direction of current flow, we've got the self-induced voltage, which is equal to J omega L2 times I2. And then going in this direction, we traverse the in mutually induced voltage going from minus to plus. So that's going to be a minus J omega M times I1. Because it's shorted out, the sum of those two, the sum of those two voltage terms is going to have to equal zero. So we know, first of all, that the J omega terms we can cancel those out, and if we take this to the other side, we get then that L2 I2 is equal to M times I1. Now, recalling this is an ideal transformer, therefore the coefficient of coupling is equal to 1, we get then that M is equal to just the square root of L1 times L2. If we divide both sides of the equation by L2 and replace M with this expression, we get then that I2 is equal to the square root of L1 times L2 over L2 times I1. Now we can cancel the square root of L1 here with a square root of L2 down here, which then leaves us that I2 is equal to the square root of L2. Um, did I say that right? We can cancel a square root of L2 with a square root of L2 down here, and that's going to leave us then L1 in the numerator divided by L2. Both of these terms, that's an L1 and this is an L2, both of those terms under the square root times I1. Now, recalling finally that L is equal to N squared times the permeance, where N is the number of turns in the coil, we can reuse this expression here to replace L1 and L2, and we get then that I2 is equal to the square root of, this is L1 up here, so that will be N1 squared over N2 squared. Oops, both of them times the permeants. Can't forget that at this point because we've got to cancel those. The Another one of the approximations in the ideal uh, transformer is that both coils are wrapped around the same core so that the permeance is the same and they will cancel. And we're left with then that I2 is equal to the square root of N1 squared over N2 squared is just N1 over N2 times I1. And as we saw with the relationship between the voltages in the primary and the secondary, similarly, the relationship between the currents in the primary and the secondary um, consists only of the number of turns in each of those coils. In this case here, I2 is equal to N1 over N2 times I1. Now, once again, let's just look at the case. If the number of turns in the primary, N1, is greater than the number of turns in the secondary, this number here will be a number greater than 1, and I2 will be greater than I1. So let's say that again. If N1 has more turns than N2, if N1 is greater than N2, I2, the current in the primary, will be greater than, I'm sorry, the current, I2, I2 the current in the secondary, will be greater than I1, the current in the primary. So we saw when relating the voltages that the larger voltage was associated with the greater number of turns. We see then in the current relationship, the larger the, the, the larger current is in the coil with the smaller 
number of turns. Let's say that again. You'll have a larger current on the side that has fewer turns than the current in the side that has a greater number of turns. We can divide both sides by I1 and we get then that I2 over I1 is equal to, I2 over I1 is equal to N1 over N2. And let's just go ahead and write the similar relationship that we had for voltage so we can compare the two. In this case, it was V1 over V2 was equal to N1 over N2. So you see the inverse relationship. If you have a larger voltage in the primary, you're going to have a smaller current. And if you have then a smaller voltage, you're going to have a larger current. Which takes us then to the final approximation that uh, associated with the ideal transformer, and that was that it was a lossless device. In other words, P in equaled P out. Well, P in is just going to be V1 I1, and that's going to equal P out, which is V2 times I2. So, if you've got a larger voltage, you'll have a smaller current, so that the product of the voltage times the current times the current in the primary is equal to a smaller voltage times a larger current in the secondary.